This is the best way for creating consistent characters with AI. Whether you want to create cinematic AI movies, children's books or AI influences, you'll need to have your characters stay the same throughout multiple shots. But this is actually quite the challenge. Even with my consistent and pausable character workflow that I showed you in one of my last videos, you would still need to try out multiple prompts and seats to get it right. And details, especially on complex clothes, still might change a little bit from image to image. But that has changed now, thanks to a new image model called Flux. I updated my workflow to it and look at these amazing results. I can now generate images where the characters look exactly the same whether they are animated or live action. Oh, and this also works for multiple characters in the same image, which is especially important if you want to tell a story. So let me show you how it works and how you can set it up on your own computer for free. The trick is that we first generate a character sheet that's depicting the character from multiple angles and with different emotions. And for that I created this pose sheet that shows the character's bones in the open pose format and we can now use Flux, Stable Diffusion XL or even Stable Diffusion 1.5 to generate our character sheet. You could use this post sheet with most AI interfaces, but I created a workflow for ComfyUI, which automates all of the steps. And as usual, I've created a free step-by-step -step guide on how to install ComfyUI and where to download and put all the models for this to work. And let's start with the Flux version. Once you have everything set up, you can just drag and drop my workflow into the ComfyUI interface. This workflow consists of four steps, but the last three will happen automatically and we don't need to use them yet. So we can deactivate them using this fast muter here. Let's focus on the first group. The only thing that you need to do here is double check if the correct models are loaded and import the pose sheet here. And you can just drag and drop that in there. For the Flux version, you can use a prompt format like this. And the weather is getting quite cold out there, so let's create like a character for like a fashion magazine showing autumn fashion. You basically just leave all these keywords here and add short descriptions of the character that you want to have. And that's all you have to do in this first group. If you want, you can also add like a name for your character here. But then you can just click Q prompt and wait for the first step to finish. So the prompt is working, but this image is a bit dark. So what you can do is just change the seed a little bit and try out a new one. So when you found a character sheet that you like, and let's just say even though the hair is a bit red instead of brunette and the coat is more like gray, I would say, no, a little bit brown. Let's say you found an image that you like, a character that you like and you want to continue with it. Then you can just activate the second group and click Q prompt. And this will then upscale that image. This already looks a lot better than this first image here. You can see the faces and everything is really broken. Here it already looks a lot better. And then in the second step in that group, it will actually go through all the individual faces and just add more detail and make them a bit cleaner. For the next step, it will be important that we have images of all the individual faces and we can just simply save them out by activating this node here using Control B. If we now click Q prompt, it will actually save out all the individual faces. Next, we can activate the third group and click Q prompt. And this should only take a second or so. This is another group that will only save out the individual poses. And now we can already activate the last group and click Q prompt. And this will quickly create different emotions for our character. I just set some example emotions here, but you can customize them. You have all these sliders and you can just change them and find the emotions that you like. Maybe we can make her even more happy in, in this one by just raising the eyebrows. No, that's not happy, but um, it doesn't matter too much which e emotions exactly you create. It's uh, more about having a, a wide variety. And what you could also do is like rotate the head so you have like different angles. So let's just change the rotation here into the other direction, change the rotate pitch and just see what that creates. Now we have her looking to the right, we have her looking to the left and this will be very good for the next step. If you support me on Patreon, you can also get your hands on the advanced version of the workflow, which will add upscalers to different parts of the workflow. For example, it will upscale the individual face images for some better quality and it will also upscale the emotions at the end here. Sometimes it can happen for like stylized characters like Pixar characters or anime characters that there are some weird glitches around the edges of your face and using this upscaler here you can fix that. Now it's important to know that the emotion setup will not always work perfectly for any type of character. Like for example here I created this lizard person that I showed you in the beginning and I really love how well that came out. 
but for the emotions the face was just a bit too far away from a typical human face so it was not able to add the emotions correctly but at least we got some different angles out of it. Another important thing to note with the Flux workflow is that it can be a bit tedious to work with. For one, it's pretty slow, even on better computers, and the control net is just not as robust as, for example, the SDXL control net. So when it works, it typically works really well, like for this character, for example, but you probably get a lot of weird and broken results as well. And I don't want you to get frustrated. So I also created an SCXL version of this workflow, which is not only a lot faster, but it will also give you way more consistent results. So you can see it looks pretty much the exact same, except the beginning here is a bit different. We don't need as much stuff. I'm using the wildcard turbo model, which I've been using a lot in my videos because it's like super fast. So the settings are fine tuned to this model. If you want to use another SDXL model, make sure to change the K sampler settings here. But let's quickly try out a prompt. Like for example, let's use this one to create an anime character. I'm just activating all the groups here and just let that run through. And this only took a couple of minutes. It did an amazing job of creating the sheet. The faces look cool and even the emotions look really good. But you can see that, for example, this one is a bit broken. So you could try to fix that by just changing it a little bit, or you can use the upscaling in the advanced workflow to fix it. So now, why did we do all this? Well, we now have a perfect data set to create a LoRa. A LoRa is basically a way to give an AI model more context for an object or a subject. And it's definitely not a new technique, but it has never been so easy. Let's say we want to create a LoRa for this woman here that we created earlier. Let's first just create a folder with all the good images of her. Think of a unique name for her. Maybe maybe she's called Tina AI. Something that's not a typical word. And let's just look through the images and copy over the images that have a high quality and show her from multiple angles. I want the different emotions. And this is honestly probably already enough. So I usually use between 10 and like 15 images to train the LoRa. Let's just look through some of these additional face poses. Maybe we can use some of these extreme side views here. That's cropped in a weird way. So I just open that with paint and just focus on the face here. And I would say that's a pretty good data set. To train the LoRa, we need a tool called Flux Gym. And they call Flux Gym a that simple web UI for training Flux LoRa's and I can only confirm it. It really is that simple. The easiest way to install it is using Pinocchio. Pinocchio is this super easy one-click installer for many AI tools. So just download that, go to discover and search for Flux Gym and install it from here. Once it's done, you can just start it, put in the name of our LoRa and I'll just call that Tina AI. And I also want to use this as the trigger word as well. So when we put that in the prompt and we have the LoRa activated, it will create this character. You can choose which model you want to train. I want to train Flux Dev and I have more than 20 gigabytes of VRAM, so I choose that. But I also tried this tool on one with 12 gigabytes and it worked pretty well as well. It just takes longer. That's all we need to do here. And then I just take my images and drag and drop them here. It already added the caption with our trigger word. And now we have two options. We can caption the images manually or we can use Florence 2 to tag our image. So this is what it would look like. So here you can see, for example, Tina AI, a woman with long red hair wearing brown turtleneck sweater and a gray coat. She is standing in front of a wall. And these are actually quite good. I usually prefer tagging the images myself and keeping it a bit simpler. For example, let's just drag and drop these images in here again. So what I like to do is gray background and then the pose and emotion and um, shot type. Something like this. This should be enough. And that's pretty much it. Now we can just click start training and it will download the model, which will probably take a long time the first time you run this because the Flux Dev model is huge. Now I just let that run. Okay, it's now 37 minutes later and the LoRa is finished. So we can go to the Pinocchio folder, API, Flux Gym, uh, Outputs, and it created a folder with the name for our LoRa. We have different variations, so it's doing like uh, snapshots at different stages of training. But let's just try out the last one. Go to my ConfUI directory, ConfUI, Models, 
Laura's and I created an extra folder for Flux and my own Flux gym models. And I'm just going to put that here. So this is my custom Flux workflow. We have the option to input two Laura's here, but let's just deactivate one and only use this one here. And we can put the strength pretty high. I sometimes lower it to give it a bit more freedom, but something between 0.9 and one uh, will work. So let's just use this prompt, click Q prompt. And this is just the first image and it already looks really good. Let's just try out another seat. And this is also looking pretty nice. It's definitely her. Let me quickly explain this custom flux workflow that I'm using here. And you can also get that for free on my Patreon. Basically the beginning here, the beginning stages is just the typical ComfyUI flux workflow. And then in, for the second image here, I added a little hack that I learned from Matteo from Latent Vision. Basically during somewhere in the middle of image generation, you add some extra noise and this will make the textures of the image look less like plastic and more realistic. And it will also add some minor details. After that, I added an upscaler. You can also deactivate this part if you don't need that. And then finally, I add some film grain using this node just for this analog type of um, photography style that I'm going for here. And generating images with this workflow and the LoRa's is so much fun because pretty much every single image looks cool. No cherry picking, these are just all the images that I created. The same goes for this character here. This is just a character that I trained on this character sheet to try out if this workflow works for other styles as well. It looks really good. Like these are all the images that I created but as I said, this workflow also works for multiple characters and it's actually really easy. You just need to load in both Laura's and I like to decrease the strength a little bit just to give more flux a little bit more flexibility. And then I'm going to use a prompt like this. First, we describe the general composition of the shot, mentioning both keywords of the Laura and how they relate to each other. So they are standing next to each other and to keep them from, from mixing, because that's usually what happens when we stack Laura's on top of each other. It creates these sort of hybrid styles and creatures. So to actually fix that, I just add character descriptions for both of these characters. So as the image is generated, the Loras actually have a chance to fall into place in the correct regions and create images that just look really good. I hope you enjoyed this video and give Laura training a try. If you would like to support my work and gain access to the advanced workflows and exclusive example files, like all the data sets, character sheets, Loras and prompts I used and created for this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support makes this channel possible, so thank you very much and see you next time.